This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treats and Sakura Co. More details for yummy Japanese snacks at the end of this video. Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Rasno. I have done it. After weeks of watching the series Hilda, I've made it to the top of the mountain, the peak of my journey. I have watched Hilda and the Mountain King. I have delayed this review far too long. Now I am here to present to you what I think of this movie that is based on a cartoon series. But unlike my Steven Universe The Movie Review, which you can find if you click the card in the upper right corner of the screen, Hilda and the Mountain King is a little different from that because SU The Movie can be a standalone movie without really needing to watch the series as a whole, while Hilda and the Mountain King really starts off where the series left off with no recap or flashbacks, no, no nothing. Now with that being said, you have a a few choices. You can either watch the series and movie, you already know the series, or you can just continue watching and get the gist of the series. I admit, the series is good, but for someone working hours on end in most days of the week, I don't have that much time to watch a series. Don't get me wrong, I thoroughly enjoyed my watch of the series. Nonetheless, it's a great cartoon and every episode made me smile at the end for reasons I cannot explain other than yeah, I like how the episode ends. Now there's a lot of setup from the series to the whole movie, which I'll try and catch you up to speed on all you need to know about the world of Hilda. Hilda once lived in a forest with her mother but then moved to a town called Trollberg where they built a wall around the city to keep the man-eating trolls away from the town. Hilda made two friends, the cautious David and the book smarts overachiever Frida. Throughout the series, those two have character development such as David getting more courageous in his own way and Frida learning to become a witch with the help of the town's librarian Kaisa and her mentor Tildy. Now throughout the series, multiple episodes are dedicated to presenting how dangerous trolls are or having the topic appear in the backseat. Hilda befriended many creatures such as a tiny elf named Alfer, who you can only see after filing the proper paperwork, which elves love to do. She found Anissa, a creature that crawls into nooks and crannies where they have their own little space called Nissa space. This part is actually relevant and interesting, bear with me for a second. Nissa space is a space where all the Nissas reside and every household has a Nissa. So when one person goes inside the Nissa space and comes out from a different exit, they may find themselves in a different home or different parts of their home. The movie starts where the last episode of the series ends off and here's the rundown. Hilda and her mom had an argument because Hilda feels stifled and wants more freedom. So against her mom's wishes to stay home, she blackmails Tontu, their Nissa, to let her enter the Nissa space to go to Frida's house without her mom knowing. Her mom catches her and tries to pull her back out, but Tontu isn't aware of this and tries to pull her from the other side. So because of this constant pulling, they were transported into a cave of the trolls. They met a troll and her child named Baba that gave them a roof and safety to sleep through the night and then guided them out. Now here's where it gets spicy. The episode ends with Joanna, Hilda's mom, bringing breakfast to Hilda in the morning and oh boy, that is not Hilda. That's right, the movie starts off with Hilda and the troll mother's daughter having to switch places and her trying to escape. But as every troll, they freeze and turn to stone once the sun is up. And oh my gosh, the opening of this movie is just beautiful and mesmerizing. I love how they use reflections and how the camera kept turning to show different things in both sides as it goes on. Anyway, so the movie at the start is split into two parts and an extra little part for David and Frida. First is the life of Hilda as a troll trying to adjust to what she wanted. A free life even though she was having difficulty accepting it at first and trying to run away from the troll mom. She meets an extremely large troll trapped in a cave named Trundle who told Hilda that the troll mom turned her into a troll and switched her with her daughter. Trundle offered to help her undo the spell if she helped him in return and asked her to promise not to tell anyone which she did because she was hella desperate. Now, Trundle Trundle asked a bunch of things like troll mead, which is a drink that nourishes trolls for days, take the bells off of the cave, and get the Mountain King's treasure that is color red. Ooh, how vague and nondescriptive. He also instructed her to stay with the troll mom since she will treat her like her own child, and she did. She taught Hilda how to be a troll, played with her, and spoke to her gently as she taught Hilda about troll kind. While all that was happening, Joanna, Hilda's mom, was frustrated not being able to find Hilda since Hilda can only come out at night but at the same time Joanna can only look for her in the morning since there was a newly decreed curfew in Trollberg so it's gonna be a big problem she was so desperate to find her she sneaked out and went looking during the night but with so many trolls she had to go back and while all that was happening David and Frida are searching to find Hilda themselves they go to the library where Kaisa the witch that I mentioned before recommended them a book about changeling where two beings change place somewhat in this context 
context, but immediately snatches it away, saying witch magic and troll magic doesn't go together, and it's a bad idea to try and attempt undoing it using witch magic. But the two try it anyway, and they find Hilda running around with the troll mom, but the spell didn't last and Frida's room turned into a mess, realizing the fact that Hilda looked happy being a troll. While getting the red treasure, Trundle asked of Hilda, she had a trippy little moment where she got sucked in the red orb and turned back into a human, had somewhat visions of going through a little town and getting attacked by tiny little trolls, and her mom suddenly popping up out of nowhere and then boom, back to reality. Don't ask me why that vision is so confusing, it just is, wait for it, okay? And while that was happening, Joanna asked help from the fame-hungry Alberg to accompany her to find Hilda during the nighttime, and in exchange, she will show him the cave of the trolls, which is honestly a bad idea since this man is the type of man who will legit throw a child into a well if it means that he'll be famous. But Joanna is desperate. If you haven't watched the series or movie, you might think, well, Joanna has no compassion to the trolls to just lead this maniac into their homes. But earlier in the movie, while looking for Hilda in daylight, she went around taking off bells from the trolls. Now you might be wondering, why does little old bells have to do with all of this? Well, funny you might hypothetically ask. You see, the little old bells hurt and drive trolls away. Even Hilda states that those little old bells can hurt her little old self. Then this little old big old bell might kill her. So that being said, Joanna has compassion for the trolls, she's just desperate. I'll be honest, the bell scene of Joanna might just be her trying to take off the bells, hoping that she'd take off Hilda's in case she wakes up at the night. But there's still compassion in this woman for creatures around her. Now when Joanna shows Alberg the entrance to the cave with the help of little old Bubba, They come across Hilda, and the look of relief on Hilda and softly saying mom melted my heart honestly. She saves them from a troll and carries all of them on her way to Trundle, and since she has the strength of a troll, she can do those things. She brings the red orb, but Trundle is nowhere to be found. Then troll mom suddenly appears and Joanna goes defensive, trying to keep her Hilda close. But the troll mom had one concern, the bells in the cave were gone. But her worry was cut short because Bubba, her child, suddenly appeared, and she ran to hug her. But BAM! Alberg and his half bald half mullet full a-hole snatched Bubba. Joanna saved Bubba and the two kids go back to their normal selves, apparently returning the kids to their normal mums, nulls the spell and broke it. I guess, I don't know, there was no context for this. I'm sorry, it seemed like an ass pool, but you know, if it's Hilda, I can forgive it. Troll Mom explains that those spells were there for a reason, and that the cave was actually a prison. Then Trundle was like, haha, speaking of prison, here's the prisoner, Bulaga. That's not what he said, but that's what I wanted him to say. So Trundle calls a bunch of trolls and was ready to attack Trollberg. Hilda follows them and tries to stop him, and Frida, on the other hand, on the other side of town, tries to talk to one of the trolls and sees what Hilda saw in the red orb, except she saw her own mother. Then the two meet up and Frida told Hilda what she saw in the vision, realizing what Trundle is planning. Trundle was planning to let himself or the trolls get hurt so that their mother, who is sleeping right under Trollberg, would stand up and defend her children. Now, now Albert butts in and freaking kills Trundle, making the mother of all trolls start to sit up. And the trolls versus humans war is about to start because Alberg won't listen to those around him. So Hilda smacked that big old red orb right into Alberg's big head and saw what Hilda saw in her vision. Realizing that he was wrong, he let the trolls enter the town peacefully. Luckily, no chaos ensued in the town and the trolls got as close as they can to their mother as they can get. You might have one glaring question. How did the mother of trolls get stuck under the town, you ask? Apparently, she scattered her children on the mountains to keep them close to where she sleeps, but when she slept one time, someone built a large village and she just waited for them to leave, but they never did. They grew, in fact, and now it's Trollberg and she just never had the chance to stand up for the sake of the humans. Alberg stepped down from his position and gave it to Gerda, which is a big step for his character since this is the first decision that he thought about anything but himself. And Gerda's first decree was to make a day every year to celebrate the trolls peacefully entering the town to see their mother, which I think was a really sweet thing to do. But to add the cherry on top, they added some citizens still having a hard time accepting the trolls, which I kind of like since it's somewhat 
grounded, that not everybody can accept a sudden change, since the citizens have been brainwashed to believe that trolls are dangerous to humans and that they eat humans, when all they wanted was to be closer to their mother. So that was Hilda and the Mountain King. I'll be honest with you, I think it's a hassle to have to watch the whole series for this movie, but I really enjoyed it, and I truly think that this movie was their initial plan from the start, and the series was just to help build up this movie further. The series gave a lot of context, needed character arcs and introductions, as well as fleshing out the world and their view on the trolls as a whole because throughout the whole series, they depicted trolls to be dangerous creatures that Hilda and her gang had to be careful. And sure, there were episodes where they had scenes for us and Hilda empathizing with trolls, but still cautious. Every time Hilda encountered a troll, even if it was showing a soft side to them, it always partnered fear and cautiousness. In earlier episodes, they even showed how a troll can jump heights and wreck buildings if it wanted to. The image of danger and worry around trolls was instilled to the audience and I think that's a really smart move as it builds up to the movie because even with that instilled fear in every episode, we never once see a troll eat a human or cause danger to anyone unless it's aggressed. Every time we see a troll, it doesn't act like a mindless creature. It acts with reason. Don't bother it and it won't bother you. And a lot of aggressive trolls appear in the show because of either one, safety patrol specifically Alberg is threatening or attacking them or two, they feel scared with an intruder in their environment. There are even some characters that show empathy to the trolls aside from the main cast. The bell ringer for one, the man who rings the bell in the bell tower in the series, and Gerda as well. We start thinking of questions because of this push and pull image of them. Are trolls actually really dangerous or is that just what people like to say because they fear it? Or is their very existence a threat to the people of Trollberg? And this movie answers those questions with how the trolls live. Hilda living as a troll and learning their history gives more insight and perspective on how the trolls live and the fact that an unknown force urges them to approach Trollberg, which is revealed by the end to be their mother calling out to them, makes us understand them more. I like the episodic theme of Hilda's series, but after seeing the movie, it made me realize and appreciate more how the series build up to the movie. It's not a standalone movie, so you have to go through the whole series, but also, with all that time, the series and the movie manages to flesh out the characters, develop them, and the world they live in, while giving us a resolution to one of the most antagonistic forces in the series. Antagonistic may not be the right word for it since Hilda doesn't really have one enemy or antagonist going against her goals, but every time a troll would appear, you know something bad or something serious is happening. And that's why I felt like it was the closest thing that I could call them, even though they don't really fit into the mold of an antagonist. All in all, the movies just seem like a ending special for the series, like a longer episode rather than a movie. But I still like it that way. The animation is the same as the series. It's smooth, it's great, and it's got its own style. I didn't really find the art style attractive to the eyes at first, but it grew on me. I think it's cute and I've learned to love it. Now, I'm actually happy that I can talk about the characters in this movie because as someone who watched the series, no one seemed out of character. I want to start off with Hilda. Now, Hilda was always a free-spirited kid who liked adventuring and discovering what's out there in the world, hence why she hated the idea of living in Trollberg before moving to live there. That being said, the episodes prior to the movie built up the conflict of her feeling restricted and wanting more freedom, and I saw Hilda being in that state she wanted for the whole series to be free. And I thought there would be a scene where Hilda realizes the downsides of being free or feeling lonely while she's free but not with her loved ones. I mean, I could tell she was lonely, but I kind of wanted that little oomph, you know? To see her reflecting on the things she wants to be, not what she thought it would be like at all, you know? But her story in the movie was still good. And the fact that she can talk to trolls and be a bridge for them, for humans and trolls to communicate, seems fitting since she's always been the one to dip her toe to find more things outside of her comfort zone and help even the strangest creatures. Like how she helped Tantu, her Nissa, to find a new home which was hers now. I say all this, but there was one moment that confused me. One single brief moment that intrigued me but was never brought up again and it was the scene where she asked Trilla or Trilla the troll mom if she had a troll dad and when she replied no she looked disappointed so good question do I have a troll dad anywhere no why no reason the whole series, her dad was never mentioned, never brought up, and this has been the first ever time Hilda mentioned a dad. That might be a build-up for the third season, but only the future knows. 
Next, we have Joanna, who hands down is the best cartoon mom I've ever watched as of recent. She is so understanding and so great. Throughout the series, she did nothing but worry and think what's best for Hilda, all the while tending to her needs and being there for her when she needs her. So when I saw her not sleeping, breaking down, it really hits hard because this is the first time we've seen her like this, and for good reason. In every adventure Hilda has, she has a chance to find her, to help her, and know what she's doing to help. But now she's helpless without a clue if her daughter's even remotely okay. She was so frustrated that we got to see her lash out at Bubba. It was a horrible thing to watch, but she quickly realized and stopped herself. It was so shocking for me, even if it was a brief scene, because we've never seen her like that until now. Her goal in the movie was to find Hilda, and she did it. Her character arc was to learn to trust Hilda more, and she did. Both mother and daughter understood each other's perspective by the end of the series. It's just that Hilda learned that lesson early on in the last episode of season 2, where she had to sit and worry about her mom and Twig in the troll cave, so the wrapping up of her character was not included in the movie. Hilda and the Mountain King portrayed more of Joanna's adventurous side. Now we can see where Hilda got her wild side. Joanna is my favorite cartoon mom, hands down. Yeah, that's right. Shoo, get out of here, horrible moms. Pah. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Rose. Then we got Trilla or Trila, which I now know is the name of the troll mom. I only knew about it because of the subtitles on Netflix, because she was never mentioned, her name was never brought up ever in the movie. I'll just call her Trila from this point on. Trila is sweet, and I absolutely love her voice. I appreciate the fact that she treats everyone kindly, and treats Hilda like her own child as well. She did have a reason for doing the changeling spell, and while I think what she did wasn't right in any sense, I can still understand her reasoning for it. She wants to give her daughter a better life as do any good mother would. Good mom as well. Trila for troll president. Then we go to David and Frida, which played a minor role in the movie but still had something to do while everything was going down. I just love seeing them incorporate Hilda's feistiness and sense of justice when Frida walked out of class because of misinformation about the trolls being taught to them and stirring up a rally in which the teacher takes pride in their independent thought. Also, David learned to be more brave in his own right, as what he learned from the series is being shown more apparent here in the movie, as he faces his mom and actively takes action when needed. They even offered to help Joanna find Hilda, which at this point I was relieved since Joanna won't be doing this alone anymore. But then she leaves them, since she says she can't bring along kids and that's understandable. I love this scene because it shows both parties being responsible in their own right and we can just understand them since we already know what kind of people they are. Frida and David can't just sit around not knowing if their friend is okay or not okay and going out of their way to cross the walls even when they had the scary experience experience with trolls prior to the movie. And Joanna would never put these kids in danger because if anything happens to them, it'll be on her. And she's already preoccupied thinking about Hilda to watch over them. And of course, I can't forget about Trundle. As short as his screen time was, he made some sense and was even willing to sacrifice himself so that the mother troll would stand up and the trolls can have the land again. Honestly, at the earlier parts of the movie, I really thought he would help, but I guess he fooled me. <laughs> Ugh, I'm so gullible. But yeah, do I think this is a good movie? Yes. Is it worth watching though? That I can't say for sure. If, if you are a student with a lot of free time, then yes, you should watch it. But if you are an adult like me with barely enough time to watch two episodes straight, then maybe not, because it is two seasons in a movie. I love the watch though, no regrets about this. I like this movie a lot and I can't wait for season 3. Thank you Amanda for recommending this to me. What movie would you like me to review next? Do you have a hidden gem of a movie you know? Share it with the class? Do you have a movie so horrible, so stupid, that you can't believe someone invested their money in it? Share it with the class please, I want to trash a movie. Oh, what's this? It's today's sponsor, Tokyo Treats and Sakura Ko. Tokyo Treats and Sakura Ko are both subscription boxes that deliver exclusive Japanese snacks right to your doorstep. Tokyo Treats provide modern Japanese snacks, while Sakura Ko services provide a more traditional bundle of goodies. In both boxes, you can see the booklet that shows what's inside the box, because some snacks are only in Japanese, and they also put what ingredients are in each snack, as well as the common allergens. So rest assured, you know what you're eating. This month, Tokyo Treats is celebrating Tsukimi through their Moon Festival Munchies box. I got to taste their Hello Kitty milk bread, which is creamy but also would taste good with other spreads. Look. Lucy likes it herself. Look at this little good girl giving her toothpick arms. Adorable. 
On the other hand, Sakurako is celebrating Tsukimi through its Kyoto Moon Festival box. They partnered with the local Kyoto government to give you the full Kyoto experience. I've got to taste the yummy retro animal yochi cookie. Sugar glazed cookies that are shaped like animals and auspicious symbols. I put it in the Tsukimi snack plate that's included in the box. And oh, can you guess what this is shaped like? That's right, it's your mom! Use this promo code to get $5 off of your first purchase. You can use this link for the Sakura Co. box, or if you want to buy Tokyo Treats, you can use this other link. Both links can be found in the description. Thank you Tokyo Treats and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. So yeah, shoutouts to my freaking amazing patrons. Look at them, so awesome. The channel is still alive and kicking because of them. If you want to support the channel, you can pledge among these choices to donate a dollar or pledge to larger ones for other rewards like being the Discord for patrons or requesting a movie that I cannot refuse to review. Thanks a bunch, Jacob K, Kyle, and Cross. And big shoutouts to Epic Knight, who is in the Dill Pickles tier.